we finally got around to packaging the deep linking component so that we can install it through the marketplace. Uh, you know, the first version, uh, you kind of needed to be a developer to actually get it working. Uh, not many people were able to do that. So we decided to go package it up nicely uh, and put it on our marketplace. We also added a couple of different things to the marketplace. So uh, because we're releasing more and more components and we're doing uh, fixes, updates, and improvements, if you guys want to stay up to date with what we're doing, uh, feel free to just drop your email here. This is a, a MailChimp thing, so you'll go through the MailChimp process. Um, but we'll send out, I don't know, maybe newsletters or, or just uh, quick emails to say here, we've released a new component uh, or we've updated uh, certain components and added new functionality to it. So feel free to, to sign up there. Um, we also have our, our Adalo uh, via PragmaFlow link. If you guys want to just click on that, I'd appreciate it. Um, so this way, Adalo is going to get a record that, that you, know, you guys are, are liking what we're doing. So uh, let's just get right into it with the deep linking. Um, as with everything, I'm just going to mention uh, PragmaFlow Inc., Adala Deepish Linking. Uh, if you have issues running uh, any of this, go into the Issues tab. You will need a GitHub account. Uh, just create a new issue and fill in what your problems are, and, and we'll triage it as, as quick as we can. This has not been tested on iOS, but uh, I did actually do a bit more checks for the iOS, so it should work on iOS. Uh, if it doesn't, let me know, and, uh, and we'll go into iOS testing some more. So with that said, I've created a couple of different links, and these are like better deep links than we used to have. So we can actually go into the details pages. So if you remember the last one, you couldn't really get into details pages. You can kind of fake it. Uh, so now we've added it. So if I click on, let's say, organizations two, it'll pop up to say, oh, that's another thing. So I've put in HTTPS. We'll go over, there's different uh, things that we could put here, but because I used HTTPS for this one, when I click on it, it asks me, do I want to open it in the web browser or in, uh, the app that I've installed. So when I click on it, it takes me to the list of, of organizations of organization two. If I go, I can do organization one, locations one, which is, we'll go through the app later, but this will take me to page four, and this is the details of organization one, location one. We can also just go to organizations, which will give me the list of organizations. So if I click on A and I click on D, that was equivalent to organization one, which is A, and location one, which was D. We can just go home. We can close the app. We can launch into organization two. And now we're in organization two. So that's really it. So, so we can now do, do some pretty good deep linking. Uh, one of the limitations that we have uh, right now on this component, uh, again, just to package it for the NoCode community, if you're not logged in and you click on deep link, if you remember the way that we did it before, if you weren't logged in, we remembered it so that when you do log in, you'll jump to the site. This one, if you're not logged in, it won't deep link. So this, these will only work for logged in users. It's not that we can't do it. We'll probably add that functionality afterwards. Uh, but just for now, to get this out to the no code community, uh, we're just going to do it like this. Another thing to note is the back button. So when you go back, uh, you know, that's based on where you are. It's, it's a relative back. So if I click on organization one, location one, when I go back, I go back home because I never actually went. If I go to the organization list, I click on A, I click on D. When I go back, I go back to here, back to here, back to here, because that's the way that I navigated to it. Where with the deep link, the way that I navigate to it, is 
just straight to the page. So going back is whatever the last page was open. So if I'm on the charities page and I click on it, that means when I go back, I go back to the charity page because that was the last page I was on. Uh, again, this is this is normal. This is how it actually works. I just want you guys to be aware of that. So let's jump into how this actually works now with the new component. So with the old component, if you remember, uh, you'd have to drop it on the screen and you'd have to link up a whole bunch of different events to it. You know, if you had 100 pages, you'd need 100 different events to link properly. What we've done now is we've actually just made it um, made it the word or, or the, the link to, to this page. So this page here, sorry, I'm just trying to get the zoom proper. This page here, this is the link. So if I share somebody this link here and they have the app installed, this is the page that they're gonna go to. If I share this link, this is the page it goes to. So you have to make sure that each page has a unique, uh, a unique link to it. <laughs> if you have three pages with the same link, it's going to choose the first one uh, that you, you put it on. What else? Okay, so now there's three different parts to it. It is, what is the URI scheme that you wanna use? So this is HTTPS by default, but if I wanted to go Pragma Flow, we can see that the link now changes. So anytime somebody types in Pragma Flow colon slash slash at download.com slash home, they're gonna to come to this page. So it won't be HTTPS anymore, it's Pragma Flow colon slash slash. If I wanna change the host name, I can put anything I want. So I could actually just put PF. I can put, you know, Pragma Flow, we have a bunch of different projects. So this one's the components one. So I can go Pragma Flow components for the Pragma Flow components, which will launch this app. But on a different one, I can do Pragma Flow slash geo and that would launch the geolocation uh, project or anything like that. Um, anything that's a valid URL, I can go www.mysite.com. All of this doesn't matter. These two are global. So if we actually look here, when I change something, it changes to all instances of it. Finally is the path that we wanna bring it to. So once we have these two, now we put the path. So this is the slash home. If I wanna go and add more, we don't put the slash before home, but we can put slashes after home. So I could say this is slash home slash main page. And when somebody clicks on this link here, it will take them to this page. Now, when it comes to linking uh, nested pages, we use curly braces. So a curly brace will be replaced by an actual ID of what you wanna go into. So this one here is slash organizations. This page relies on this data. So we're gonna put a curly brace just to let us know that we need the data for this link. Uh, it doesn't have to be organization. I just did that to be clean uh, because the available data that I'm taking is current organization. So I called it organization. This can really just be ID. If you want to put ID, it can be anything that you want. As long as it's wrapped in curly braces, it doesn't really matter. Um, so this is a nested page. This page here, page three, relies on data from page one. Page four relies on data from page three and from page uh, two, sorry, not page one, page two. So that means that I need to have two curly braces. So if we look at available data, if you, the number of curly braces you have here must match the number of link data you have here. So we have organization locations, so organizations, locations. Uh, another thing to note when you're building these, 
Oh, and you can have multiple on the same page as well. So, so if you want to have different links, um, you can have this as, as different links. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could. Um, so you don't want to go like this. Never put the before slash. You never want to do this because this page here, if we duplicate this, and let's say I have another page, uh, and I call this, um, let's say, users messages, then the actual parsed URL would be my site slash one slash one. And there'd be no way to know if I'm going to go to this page or to this page. So always put real text curly brace, real text curly brace, so it knows how to do it. Um, yeah, so these uh, here, these are the record IDs. So it's not as easy to get record IDs. Uh, I know because I haven't deleted anything, the organizations, this is record ID one, this is record ID two, this is record ID three. The way that you'd probably want to do it uh, to get these is go into your API documentation. I'm not going to uh, open up the API documentation because it'll show my session key and I don't feel like destroying that. But when you go to the API documentation, you'll be able to get the list of everything and that will have the ID that you need. Uh, the other thing you can do is put this here. Once you have this, put this into a QR code generator and you can actually just make QR codes. So when people scan the QR code, it will link to these pages. Uh, final note, the URL here. So you'll want to put these either on the top or the bottom of the page. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. Only in the editor mode will you see this. When we actually start the program, it no longer shows. So it actually goes invisible when it's running. Only in the editor mode will you be able to see these URLs. So that's it. Uh, I hope this makes everyone's lives a lot easier when using the deep linking component. Uh, give it a shot. Uh, don't, don't go and, and put it on all 300 pages to start. Uh, start with three or four pages, test it out. And then when you get that working, go to the next batch of pages and do it incrementally. Uh, that's it. I, I hope this works out for you. Feel free to reach out if you guys need help.